might know me from Uranium and Fuse. <laughs> I'm here with uh, Jason Sparky from Misery Index, Baltimore slash Silver Springs Finest. <laughs> uh, also, as you can see, huge Caps fans. Yes. Sparky Hershey wears Bears, uh, too. and Hershey Bears fans. Yep. Uh, Sparky wears the jerseys on tour whenever he can. Yep. Uh, so. Especially in Canada. Capitals suck. Hey, easy now. Allegedly. Just because the Blues made the playoffs, jackass, doesn't mean anything. <laughs> you grew up in this area? Yes. Uh, have you been a Caps fan your whole life? Yes, I have. Um, so when, when was the first uh, Caps game that you went to? Uh, my parents took me to Caps games in the early 80s. I and my young cousins used to go to the old Capitol Center. I can't remember. It would always be like the Rangers, Islanders, or some, one of the other old Patrick Division teams. Um, but we used to go all the time in, throughout the 80s, and we used to watch the games as well. It was fun. How about you, Sparky? What was your first game? Uh, it was the early 80s. I think actually uh, I went with my parents and my uncle. I think it was actually against the Red Wings, as a matter of fact. Um, but I always had friends that had tickets uh, or knew someone that had connections. The Capitals also used to do these cool promotions with uh, giant food where you buy certain products, send in the UPC code, and they send you tickets or whatever. So we were always doing that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, went to tons of games with a lot of playoff games. Unfortunately, most of them ended with... You know, not the way you wanted them to, but, uh, you know, always had good times and stuff. F living 15 minutes away from the arena when I was growing up in Bowie was always awesome to be able to just pick up on any given night, just go down there and get tickets. Who's your favorite player growing up, and who's your favorite one now? Well, uh, from the 80s, probably uh, Mike Gardner, Dino Cicerelli. Uh, 90s, when Bonder came in and started scoring a lot of the goals. Um, and now... Uh, Ovechkin, obviously, just because he's the best player in the world, but Donald Brashear is a personal favorite. Uh, he's done quite a good job since he's come to the Caps, and now we don't have to have our guys get beat down by him, so that's a pretty uh, wonderful situation. Right. How about you, Jason? Who was your favorite player growing up and favorite player now? Um, you should always like Bobby Carpenter and Rod Can't Langway. Can't miss kid. Rod yeah. Langway, I always thought. It was just hard I mean, to really identify why you like the player or whatever, but Bobby Carpenter, for sure, before he got traded, and, and, and Langway always like the old standbys for me and then recently I'm a big fan of Mike Green and, um, and Backstrom. I like sort of the silent group, like uh, guys that creep up and, and score goals. I'm a big fan of Ovechkin of course but I, I, like, I like a lot of the guys from the show the team. Do you, Class do you acts. think any of the caps listen to metal or is it all country and, and Russian techno? <laughs> no, it's none of the Mike Green and, 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 especially, and Jose Theodore of they're also in the, in the metal, and I don't know how hard it gets, but I know that I've heard that Mike Green gets a lot of, or uh, Theodore <laughs> has, because of his uh, French-Canadian origins, um, Montreal's a big hub of metal and extreme metal in Canada, and he's gotten a lot of, he's been filtered a lot of, like, CDs and stuff through the years. Mm -hmm. Theodore's cousin actually was hanging out with the Spies Icon guys when we played in uh, Montreal back in December, so I met his cousin. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so definitely he has some exposure to the heavy stuff, for sure. Just uh, Have you guys made any overtures to the Capitals organization, uh, you know, about doing any theme songs, performing before any uh, games or anything? Uh, not as of yet. <laughs> Maybe when we actually have some downtime and we're not running around the planet doing stuff, then that would be something fun to do, you know. Uh, so it's crossed my mind a few times when I've seen live musical acts, you know, performing at the arena or whatever. But you could write a song like, like, uh, Dark Star did. Yeah, a little chant song last year. Yeah, she probably uh, sit down and do something like that. Or whatever. Was it, and, uh, was it Mike or was it? It was the other guy. I think it was Mike, probably. Yeah. Well, I can't remember. So Mike's it. a Mike. I know Mike is a big Caps fan. I interviewed yeah, him last year about it. Yeah, I've talked to him about <coughs> it actually. We, we, yeah, at some point it'd be cool uh, to be able to do something like that, but. We're not really home very much at this present moment, so we're just running around. I'm, you know, wearing the jerseys, trying to represent that way and stuff. But if we could do something with the organization, that'd be amazing. Uh, your uh, family has season tickets. Yeah, my mom's been a season ticket holder for a few years, and she was always buying partial plans before she, you know, made the plunge into full season ticket holder status. So. Where she sit? Where does she uh, sit? We're in 413, uh, row D, seats 13 and 14. Yeah, my That's mom and I went to a focus group the Capitals did last year. It was like an hour before one of the, the Sunday afternoon games. And as a reward for that, they gave us tickets right on the glass. 
Oh, nice. First row, man. That was awesome. <laughs> right. Uh, so with uh, you, since you guys have been touring around the world and stuff like that, do you run into many other uh, hockey metal, you know, ba- or, you know, metal bands that are hockey fans or? Definitely in Canada. Yeah. Canada, there's always something going on. Sparky wears his jerseys up there a lot on stage, and there's always comments and mm-hmm. and, and uh, stuff like that. I think Canada for sure, states periodically. Um, Europe, not really too much. Maybe in Scandinavia. Yeah, Sweden, Sweden and Finland for sure. The big cocky countries. I think you hear more in Czech, but you don't really get much in Czech. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I think that in Czech, the metal scene is a lot separate from the sports scene there. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's like more of like a. Much. There's like some kind of cultural thing there, where like metalheads hate sports guys. It's like, a little bit insane that people are playing sports and making that kind of cash, but it's also crazy that people pay money to come see us play guitars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when you think about it, so it's an entertainment thing, really, you know. And those guys, for them, their hearts into it just as much as it is for us playing music. So, for me personally, I draw a lot of parallels in between what they're doing and what we do, just because of the fact that there is a passion involved, and there's so little chance to actually be able to make it to a point where you can make a living doing something. Like that mm-hmm. um, and if you don't you still have the enjoyment of being able to get together with your mates and you know and have a good time doing it mm-hmm. you can still go play pick up hockey and you know, everything you can go jam with your friends so for me it's always been a very similar kind of thing you know top pop acts gonna make a few million bucks a year top hockey players same way mm-hmm.